On today's episode, we are gonna be doing 30 mind-blowing things that you can make with a Cricut machine. I've partnered with Cricut on this and I have compiled 30 of my best projects over the last little bit. I have condensed each one of these tutorials and I've removed the design space aspect on most of the projects. So if you want the full length tutorials, I will list out each and every one of these in the description box below so you can click on each one of those individual episodes. But for now, let's get started with our first project, which is a fresh and clean sign that we did in a bathroom makeover. And I just loved this project. We are gonna make a really fun sign I am so excited about. As you can see here, the word says fresh and clean. We did need to slice the word clean into four sections for it to be able to cut. So we are going to just flip it over and connect it now. Fill in the gaps with just a little bit of wood filler and wait for it to dry and then we'll just gently sand it down. Now I wanted my words to be three dimensional and kind of sit off the wall a little bit, but I also needed them to be consistent. So my solution for this was to hot glue push pins to the backs of the letter. And this is how we will also attach it to the wall. Then we can just take it outside and spray paint the underside first in a matte black spray paint. And once that's dry, then we're gonna flip it back over and do a couple of coats of that same matte black and let me tell you, this sign turned out so cool. Our next DIY, we are gonna be making a wash your hands sign. We are gonna just be using a Dollar Tree blackboard and we are just gonna cut a stencil out that says wash your hands and we are going to put that stencil on our Dollar Tree chalkboard. We're gonna take some black chalkboard paint that I also picked up at the Dollar Tree, go around the edges to help prevent bleeding, let that dry. Then we're gonna do two to three coats of white chalk paint and let that dry. And then we're gonna peel back the stencil. And now we need a frame. And I just took some square wood dowels and I cut them on a 45 degree angle to make a miter frame. So once we've got that frame stained, then we are going to glue the corners together and just create that frame. And that's just kind of to tack it into place just for a second. And then we're gonna flip it over, put our finished chalkboard on it, and I just staple that into place and it's good to go. And so for like two bucks, we have a really cute piece of art. Our next Cricut project is a quick bathroom sign. I picked this one up at Dollar General. It was three bucks and we're gonna just make the center white by covering this in a white vinyl. And then I just cut this boy and girl bathroom sign. I found it on Cricut Design Studio, like in their preloaded images and made it fit and applied that over the top of our white vinyl. And I am really happy with this cute little sign and we're gonna stick it on the front of our bathroom door just using some command and strips. If you're not familiar with a Cricut machine, they are smart cutting machines that allow you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with software called Design Space that comes for free with your machine. This is where you can create your project and browse from hundreds of images and fonts. And once you've created your design, Design Space will send it to your machine to cut. I had this mirror that I kind of inherited when we purchased this home. It's big and it's just kind of plain and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to do something totally off the wall. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna spray paint the frame in my favorite gold spray paint, which is 18 karat gold by Krylon. While that's drying, what I chose to do is I picked the poem the Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. But you could take the lyrics of any song that you like or poem or scripture or any piece of literature, any text that really speaks to you. Then of course we weed it like we would any other Cricut project. 
So now we're going to apply our vinyl to the mirror. Now that we've got it peeled off, we are going to apply it to the mirror, making sure to center it up. We did eventually get it stuck onto our mirror and I hung it in my stairwell area and I just love it. It's such a unique piece. You can still use the mirror, but it becomes more of an oversized piece of art. What do you think? So I had this piece of art. It's huge. It's really pretty. I think we could do something to make it look a little bit better. Rather than painting over this, permanently altering it, what I decided to do is to take some of my favorite painter strap cloth canvas and we are going to do a massive heat press vinyl onto the canvas. So then we're gonna weed off the excess. After you've got it all weeded, we're gonna cut it out into the sections that we need. We're gonna be stretching the canvas over the top of this and just covering it up. We need about 46 inches by 46 inches of fabric. I felt like that would give us enough excess to kind of wrap around the edges and staple it into place. Then it's time to situate all of the pieces together. Once we've got it all lined up in the center how we like it, I take my easy press out and we start pressing it in sections. 30 seconds each section, I do the entire front first and then I flip it over and do the back each section for 15 seconds, the temperature is 340 degrees. And then when you're done pressing, it looks something like this. So now what we're gonna do is just lay this face down and then we are gonna take a staple gun and staple this around the canvas. But first we're gonna wanna remove the picture hanging hardware so that we can get the canvas to lay nice and flat. Now you're gonna wanna work north, south, east, west, starting from the center and working your way out. This way everything is smooth, there's no weird puckering. And then when you get to the corners, then you're gonna pull in the corner piece, staple that first, and then you fold the edges like you would a present. And then we're gonna just reattach the hanging hardware. Hardware. Now you could leave it just like this and just have it the stretched canvas, but I wanted to finish mine off a little bit more. So I'm just taking some one by threes and making a simple mitered frame. Then I'm gonna take some antiquing glaze and do just an antiquing glaze over the wood. And then we can just nail it into place. Now to purchase something similar in this size, it would be 150 to $200 including purchasing the canvas from the yard sale that I did, the, all of the supplies, we're looking at about $40-ish. And I think that that is a massive savings over $150 to $200. So you can see how making your own home decor will really add up. All right, so our next DIY, we are going to be making a large sign that says happiness is homemade. I had an extra scrap piece of MDF wood in the dimensions of 11 inches by 36 inches, which I thought would make for a good sign. So the first thing I do is take some white chalk paint and give it two good coats. And this time we're gonna be using removable vinyl because we are going to be making a stencil. And then once we have our stencil cut, we weed it. And then we put the transfer tape on as we would. And we're gonna put our stencil down. And then we're gonna take that same white chalk paint and seal all the edges. And so when it bleeds, which it always does, it will bleed the original color and create a nice seal for your new paint. And then once the white paint is dry and created that nice seal, then I'm gonna be taking a chalk paint called Vintage. And it's by Americana Decor. And it's kind of like a blue, gray, green color. When that's fully dry, we're gonna peel back the stencil and then we have the sign. I also wanted to add a frame on this, so we are gonna cut a frame out of one by twos for this one because it's a little bit more shallow. We're gonna do that same method that we did on the last piece on this and we're gonna just nail it in around the edges. There we have a beautiful sign, huge. I love how this sign looks, it's so cute.
Our next DIY was a customized doormat. In order to cut it, we had to use four stencils. We used a hairdryer to kind of suction it to the mat. And what I did that's a little bit different than what I've seen other tutorials use, I used a spray on truck bed liner as the paint. And I figured if it was tough enough for a truck bed liner, then it should be tough enough for a doormat. So we'll see how it holds up over time, but I thought that would work out really well. And so I just love the way this turned out. And if you do the double layer, Brag look. I just thought it would look really, really cute on our front porch. Next, we are going to be making a welcome sign for just left of the door. And once we have everything cut out, take it outside and spray paint it in a glossy black spray paint. And now it's time to build something to put it on. I'm gonna be using up some of this faux brick paneling that I had left over. We are gonna cut this down to 24 by 36 inches. Since our brick is kind of thin and I want to put a frame around it, we need to kind of lift it up and give it something to support a frame. So I'm just gonna use this one by three for my scrap pile. I'm gonna do butt joints because it's gonna be hidden and then we're gonna miter the frame. For the frame, I'm gonna be just using this lightweight, inexpensive one by two. Before we install the frame, I just take some white spray on primer and do two coats with that. Then I use some antiquing wax by Folk Art on the frame and let that dry. Then we lay out our lettering and when we're happy with the layout, we go ahead and use Gorilla Clear Gel Glue. After that dries, we're going to add some wood glue to our frame and nail it into place. Finally, we add a D-ring hook to hang it on. DIY is a wood round monogram for the middle of a wreath. And I take an eight inch embroidery hoop, the part that doesn't have the clip on it, and I attach that to our monogram using wood glue. Then I add some clips all the way around to kind of hold it in place as it dries. After it's dried, we're gonna take some gel stain in the color Kona and give it a good coat. Now how we are gonna attach this to the wreath is I just took a couple of paper clips and I glued them with hot glue on the top and the bottom of this monogram and then I took some twine and tied it to our wreath. DIY is an outdoor chess table. I started out with a 24 by 24 inch piece of plywood that I got from the hardware store, but I wanted to trim it out with something a little bit nicer, beef it up, make it look a little bit more substantial. So then I cut some miter edges on our trim, which was a simply a one by two, and we cut those all out. And then what I did, which is kind of different, and you might be wondering why I'm doing this, is I took a wood round that was a 15 inch round, and I made sure I knew where center is, and then I put some wood glue on that wood round and attached it to the underside of our table, and then I shot some finish nails into that. With that all assembled and dried, I went about staining it. So I went to my trusty Briar Smoke gel stain that I've used a lot on my, my channel. And while that was drying, all I did was cut out 32 two and a half inch squares, and then I weeded them out. In this case, I decided not to use transfer tape, but to use them more as a sticker. The next morning after it had dried, I measured out our 20 by 20 inch chess board, and I taped that off with blue painter's tape on the edges. And then I kind of used a square edge to really get those first couple of rows lined out. And then all it is is simply making that checkerboard pattern all the way until you use up all 32 of those squares. I decided to seal all the edges so that the paint wouldn't bleed. I used a clear varnish sealer that dries really quickly and once that was dry I did two coats of a black chalk paint that I added a little brown into. Once it was dry I peeled off all of those extra little squares and it revealed our chest board. I took some tape and taped off a very thin line all the way around and added two coats around the outer edge. Then I wanted to make sure it was waterproof, so I went ahead and took some Thompson's waterproofing 
sealer and did two coats of that. With it dry, we are gonna place our game board on this beautiful pot. I thought that would make a really beautiful table and we can set that on it. What's nice about it is you can lift it up and you can put all of your game pieces inside this urn when you're not using them. I think it turned out really, really cute. I think it's beautiful. I think it's gonna be a fun activity for my family. It really looks cool. For our next DIY, we are gonna be customizing some outdoor pavers. So I thought it would be really fun to kind of do kind of like a checkerboard pattern on this. We're gonna be applying this to a paver, a concrete paver that has maybe a little sand in it. It's, it's not gonna be the most amiable. So I did cut this out on permanent vinyl, but it does stick. It, you just have to help it a little bit and <laughs> massage it into the paver a little bit. It's not meant to be a permanent fix. We are using this as a stencil. Then I decided to get my off-white chalk paint and just chalk paint that onto the, the tile. I was pretty generous and I didn't do a clear coat to seal it because honestly the rough edges work well in this circumstance and I just did a pretty good one coat of it and let that dry and then I peeled back the stencil which it looked really pretty and then I took it out to the yard and I did a couple of matte clear coats on it just to give it some layer of protection but I think this looks really cute. You could get a few more of them and do this on like a little porch if you need it or do a little pathway of it. But I think these turned out really cute. This next DIY, I saw this on idea on Pinterest somewhere. I don't remember exactly. So the first thing I did is I took two terracotta pots of two different sizes and I painted out the larger one in kind of a blue color. And then I had some um, green paint called wasabi and I just decided to use those because I thought the blue and green together would look really, really nice. I let them dry. I designed a little stencil of a filigree pattern for the top one and then then a monogram with a similar looking filigree for the kind of larger one. The idea is, is that it would be kind of like a raised stencil. So I took some joint compound. I kind of went over our stencils and just put it on really thick. But then I took some joint compound and kind of like went around the whole thing with it and just kind of layered it up because the idea is to kind of end up with like an aged looking pot. And then I pulled off the stencil. I decided to leave it alone for the night, let everything dry, and then just see what it's like in the morning. So then I came back in and everything had set up a little bit better. So then I just started kind of playing around, adding some white chalk paint. I kind of then crisscrossed the blue onto the green and the green onto the blue to kind of make them coordinate a little bit better. The best technique really honestly was kind of stippling that on and just kind of feathering out the edges. And in the end, I think that turned out pretty cute. I did put on a matte sealer on the entire thing, um, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I think this will be good outside under covered areas. I don't know that it would be good out exposed to the elements unless I used some different paint, like maybe outdoor paint. I think it really turned out cute. If you're enjoying the content thus far, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button below. Maybe consider hitting the subscribe button as well and sticking around for future episodes I really would love it and appreciate it. I ended up with this silverware box and it's a little worse for wear. The inside was just really beat up, but the outside was also beat up. We are gonna turn this into a special keepsake box, just slash jewelry box, and we are gonna monogram it. The first thing we did is I ripped out all of the blue velvet. So I took it outside and gave the inside and the outside a really good sanding. And I knew I wanted to do a wood monogram. So what I did is I designed a monogram and then I went ahead and cut it out on my Cricut maker in like a thin balsa wood. So I decided to just make it go a little bit faster. I was just gonna hot glue the monogram into place. That was a mistake. If you were to do this, just go ahead and use wood glue and glue it to the box. It will be more flush. Put something heavy on it, let it dry 
for several hours and then move on to the next step. I drilled a hole for the handle that I'm gonna add. I took the box outside and we spray painted the whole thing white inside and out. I did two really good coats and then like a light third coat. Once that was all dried, I pulled out some stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree. So we're gonna stick them in, there was no rhyme or reason. I just kind of stuck them here or there, just the way it looked good to me. I even split one from the lid to the bottom and cut it with a razor blade. So I cut the following quote out on my Cricut machine in a pink vinyl. I just added this really cool mercury glass knob that kind of dangles like a piece of jewelry. On the outside, it's kind of sleek, white, with a little bit of glitz of that mercury glass. And then when you open to the inside, it's got a lot of fun and a lot of personality. And I just love this jewelry box and I hope you like it too. Why did she go? Whoa. Was I supposed to know the cheap? I'm gonna be using this cylinder vase set that I got at Ikea. I created a stencil on my Cricut machine and cut that out. I really liked this damask pattern. I thought it was really pretty and feminine and I thought it would look really cool frosted. Once it was all weeded, I put on my transfer tape. So once we get that all on, I wrapped the entire thing around our vase. And let me just tell you, this was not perfect execution. So I went ahead and got some spray on frosted glass effect. This one's by Krylon and all I did is take it outside, flip the glass vase over and spray two generous coats and let it fully dry. And then we brought it back in and peeled back painstakingly all of that vinyl. The end result on this was just beautiful. It's so feminine, it's beautiful, it's pretty. It looks so good with some flowers in it or you could use it as a hurricane for a candle and use it as like a lumineer. And so it's just beautiful. I created this little stencil that we are gonna actually put on the front of our pot. And then we're gonna just take some black chalk paint and just chalk paint this on. Now, this little stencil is my definition of fake, for the name of the plant. It translates to fake or a plant that you can't kill but still looks real. I just put this silly little definition together for this. I've been seeing all these plant stands around and I thought it would be really fun to create a little plant stand. So I have a three quarter inch dowel that I picked up at Hobby Lobby for $1.50. We are going to take our dowel and make these cuts. Either on a miter box or on a miter saw like you see me doing here. And once we have those cuts, we are going to pre-drill a hole exactly in the center of the four and a quarter inch piece. Then we are going to take what is called a screw dowel and we will place that in a drill and tighten it up as if it were like a regular drill bit. And we are going to simply drill that through that hole. And you want a little bit of screw dowel on either side of your wood dowel. Then we're going to pre-drill some holes in the center of the two one and five eighths inch pieces and add a little wood glue to those and then simply twist those on to either side of that screw dowel until they are nice and tight. Then I took mine outside so I could use my nail gun to then glue and shoot nails into the legs. And I kind of propped it up on a two by four board to keep everything the same height while doing this. If you don't have a nail gun, you could use smaller screws on each of the legs or just use some finished nails and nail them in by hand. Then you can fill in those nail holes with some wood putty, or you can just take a little tiny bit of that wood glue and some of the sawdust from your cutoffs and kind of mix that together with the glue and fill in those holes that way. And once that's fully dried, you give everything a good sanding and do a clear coat over the top and let that dry. I probably would have made this stencil a little bit smaller if I was planning on putting it on a stand, but it's okay. Together or separate, I absolutely love this. 
always love the Ikea pillow section and I just picked up a really inexpensive girly pillow cover and we are gonna just simply cut some vinyl that says relax and stay a while and we're gonna just heat press that right onto my pillow. Just press it at 340 degrees for 30 seconds on the front and 15 seconds on the back. Let it cool and peel back the clear film. That's it. I love this pillow and it's going to look adorable with all of my other ones. On our next project, I found like this slate cheese board or charcuterie board, but we're going to turn it into something special. So the first thing I did was give it a good cleaning. Now the wood was very dry, so I just decided to stain it and I used a darker gel stain this time. I used the color Kona. And when it was fully dry, I took it out and also gave it a good clear coat. So I made a custom stencil on my Cricut machine and then I placed it onto my piece of slate. Then I used Armor Etch Cream and I generously applied it over the area we were etching and then I let it sit for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna just wanna scrape off as much as you can with your foam brush and then put the excess back into the jar and you can reuse it on another project. Then any remaining that you weren't able to get off with your brush, you can just wipe off with a paper towel and then take it to your sink and you'll probably wanna wear rubber gloves for this, but use some soap and water to wash off the final residue. I decided to attach some handles to the wood part that I had picked up from Hobby Lobby and it's so beautiful. Isn't this a great gift idea? We are going to be taking this tag and we are gonna make it look a little less cheap. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the twine that is on there already. And then I take another one of our dried clay pieces. We are going to be using the B. I hot glue that into place. And since one of the little legs is missing, I just add a little bit of extra hot glue for that leg. And then I just paint the entire thing out in a black chalk paint and then let that dry, which doesn't actually take that long with this paint. Then once it's dry, I'm going to sand it down a little bit on the edges and we're going to take antiquing glaze and kind of blend everything together and finish it off nicely. Then I take a washer that I had on hand and hot glue that into place and restring the twine that came with it. Then I have this little wreath from the Target dollar spot from a couple of years ago and I wanted to reuse it on this and kind of frame out our little bee and add a little color and a little bit more texture. So I decide to drill a hole in our tag and then wrap some twine around our mini wreath and pull that through the hole using some washi tape to kind of thread it through and then we are going to add some hot glue and a popsicle stick on the back to kind of hold it all into place. Now you can leave it like this but I wanted to add a little brightness to it and I love typography so I went ahead and put be kind on the tag and some removable vinyl lettering just in case I wanted to switch it out later but I have hardly anything into this and I only paid three dollars for the wreath originally and then with some paint and vinyl and extras that I had on hand we took this from dollar store to boutique store with this fun hack. So my next few projects kind of have a patriotic theme and we're going to start out with a Grandin Road dupe. It's really cute. So the first thing you're gonna need is some dice. Now, I just got mine pre-made, ready to go at Hobby Lobby. So for our scorecard, we are gonna use one of these 12 by 24 inch pieces of wood. We're gonna actually cut off four inches of it. And then we're gonna take some black chalk paint and chalk paint out the entire front. Then I found this SVG on Etsy and I kind of sliced and diced it. I cut this out on my Cricut Maker, then I weeded it. It. And I'm not gonna lie, this was probably one of the most time-consuming weeding jobs I've ever done. <laughs> then we're gonna put on transfer tape and very carefully transfer our permanent vinyl onto our newly painted chalkboard. 
Now, you don't need power tools for this next part because I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy miter shears and we're just gonna miter this to fit all the way around. Now, I didn't get footage of this part, but I sprayed this in a Watco clear coat to finish it off prior to cutting it. And then we're just gonna use some Gorilla hot glue to glue it into place. Now it's time to make that adorable flag drawstring bag. So I picked up this fabric at Hobby Lobby. I got a half of yard of each and I had a ton of leftover. I measure how big I thought it should be and I actually end up making this a little larger than it really needed to be. I believe I cut it to eight inches by 14 inches and I used pinking shears so I didn't need to finish the edges later and that prevents fraying. Then I just ironed everything out. Now I normally would sew around all three sides but because the inspiration one looks like a flag, I sew down two of the sides and then I take it back to the ironing board and kind of open up those seams and match them up and iron them down. Then I sew across the bottom. Then we're gonna make a little pocket for our rope drawstring that we are going to use and sew around that. Then I just take out my seam ripper and I rip open one of the seams and then I feed our Dollar Tree rope through that and then I tie that off in a knot. Then one final detail for the eraser. I just hot glued a piece of scrap wood on the top of it to kind of give it that same wood look. We did ours for one quarter of the price at $20. And I think this would be a really cute gift idea. I just love how this turned out. What you're gonna need for this is some heavy weight chipboard. And we're gonna cut it out on the Cricut Maker because it can cut through wood and it can cut through this chipboard and give us a nice clean cut. And we're gonna cut out the X's and the O's. And then to mimic that stars and stripes look, we are gonna take some scrapbook paper and cut them out. So I cut the X's out in that and the O's out in this. And because you're using the same cut file, they should match right up like so. And we can just glue them onto the front using a glue stick. But what we are gonna do to make this more waterproof, because this is paper, is we are going to put a clear coat polyurethane and this is a non-yellowing one. I like to use the Watco. And we are gonna just give that a nice good coat. Then we are gonna need some rope or cording to do our grid and you're gonna cut four 24 inch sections out of this. Now if we do nothing to the ends of this rope, it will fray. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a lashing technique and all you do is take some twine and make a loop and then you kind of line that up near the end of the rope and then you're gonna wrap your twine around itself for about 10 times. Then you cut off the end and then you're going to lace that end piece through the hole and then you kind of pull from both ends and that kind of pulls it underneath our lashing and and hides the knot underneath and then you cut off the excess and we're gonna do that on the ends of all four pieces and then we're gonna make another one of those little pouches like we did for the yard seat using that same fabric so just repeat the steps that I did on the other bag but this time we are going to make it a little bit smaller about eight and a half by eleven inches we made our dupe for only nine dollars another great gift idea that you can customize with any paper or any fabric that you choose So for my next DIY, we are gonna be making some stars and stripes tags. So we're gonna use two more pieces of my scrap wood. I love that. And you can see that they're the same width, but this one's shorter. So we're gonna make these match up. We'll cut this one down and then we'll make tags on either corner. Once we cut off the corners, just drill a hole up top and give it a good sanding. Then I coat both tags with two coats of white chalk paint. Then I create the stripes using painter's tape and I cut out some stars on my Cricut machine and I weeded it and applied transfer tape and put that on the other tag. Then to prevent bleeding, we coat everything with the original white chalk paint to seal the edges and then we let that dry. Then I take some navy blue acrylic paint and paint the stars tag and some red chalk paint and paint the stripes. 
I easily peel off the stripes and then I start to remove the stars. We flip it over and add some antiquing glaze on the backs of the tags and then I go around the edges of the front as well. And then distress both tags with a sanding sponge. Then we just tie on some rope and knot it into place. Because I used scrap wood, I have less than a dollar of supplies into these tags and they are so cute, so patriotic, and I just adore them. So for my next DIY, we are going to be customizing this glass case. So what we're gonna be doing is I am going to etch the glass on the front side. So I got the dimensions of the display glass case, which was 21 and a half inches wide by 10 and three quarter inch tall. I also found the Marine Seal SVG and put that up top and his father's information on the bottom line in Times New Roman font. Since we are putting this on the back of the glass, we need to reverse the image. So after weeding it and putting on transfer tape, I put it onto the glass. Then I put a thick coat of Armor Etch Cream over our stencil and let that sit for 15 minutes. Then I scrape off all of the excess Armor Edge cream and put it back into the bottle. Then we're just going to want to use some soapy water to remove all of the excess from the glass. My husband really loved and was touched by this gift and I wanted to share it with all of you in case you have one of these very special flags too. idea for this fish is to make a garden stepping stone in his honor. So I start out by mixing up a little bit more concrete. For our form, I decided to use a planter liner I picked up in a three pack at Dollar Tree. I sprayed it with some cooking spray again and I pour in a little bit of our concrete. Then I take a cooling cookie rack from the Dollar Tree and I take some tin snips and I cut it down to fit inside our form. This just adds a little bit more stability to the stepping stone. Now, I don't know if it's really necessary, but I thought it couldn't hurt. Then I poured the rest of our concrete on top and smoothed it out. And my plan for the fish is to do an impression with it. And for that to work, we need it to be a little bit more firm, but still a little wet. I let it set up for like two hours. Then I take our fish and push it to the bottom third of our stone and let that set up for 24 hours. Then I remove it from our container. To make it easier to stencil, I first spray it with a clear coat that, and that will just help me to be able to put down my stencil and, and not allow for any of the flaking of the cement. And I took a stencil that I made on my Cricut machine and then I also mixed up some black outdoor paint with a little bit of gray paint to kind of soften it just a little bit and then I fill in our stencil. I decide after the fact to also add an additional three fish at the bottom and then when we're done painting it I add an additional clear coat. Now, when I saw this little fisher guy, it immediately reminded me of Alec's silhouette. Alec may have passed to the other side, but he will never be forgotten here on earth by those who loved him. <sighs> when I originally made those last couple of episodes, it was really hard to make it through those because they really were very, um, very tender and meaningful. And those are some of the best DIYs that you can do, are the ones that really have heart and meaning behind them. And that is what's so wonderful about a Cricut machine is that you can really customize your projects and make them really special and meaningful, which make great gifts, right? <laughs> so for our next few couple of projects, there are gonna be some holiday ones, but I hope that you can kind of take the ideas and principles of them and translate them for any season. And we're gonna start with a Mary Marquis sign Oh, which is probably one of my all-time favorite projects ever. <laughs> so let's check that one out. Once we had it all designed, we are gonna cut this out on my Cricut Maker. And you'll notice as it's cutting that I tape down all of my edges in blue painter's tape because it really needs to stick into place. You don't want it budging at all. But now what about that shiplap? I had a whole bunch of approximately two 
foot cutoffs from my shiplap. I did seven 25 inch long sections of this shiplap. On the bottom, we didn't want that little groove piece showing. So I just ran that through my table saw. So I had these two strips. They were like uh, one by twos and I put a little bit of wood glue on them and then I attached them to the back using some nails. Then we're gonna go get our chipboard Mary letters. We are going to lay them out onto our sign to get all of the spacing right. And then we're gonna take a pencil and kind of mark each one of those holes. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take a wood boring bit and you just drill those holes. Then we're gonna take it inside and we are going to use some Waverly Red Lacquer chalk paint and we do two good coats of this chalk paint and let that dry. And then I take our Mary letters and I start by painting it out in a white chalk paint. We take some Gorilla Glue as well as some hot glue for that instant stick and we layer that on really good and then we line it up with the holes that we already pre-drilled. Before we do anything else, we are going to attach some hooks to hang it if you want to. So I just used some D-ring hooks, just screwed them into place up near the top. Then we're gonna take some string lights. We're gonna unscrew all of the light bulbs, right? And then we are going to push the string lights through each one of the holes. And then we're gonna screw in all of our light bulbs. How easy is that, right? I love how this turned out. I am totally obsessed with this. I love the sign it's so cute okay so for the next dupe it is going to be so easy because i've done all the work for you i've designed this free image for you i knew that my coasters were going to be about four inches we cut it out now cricut had this permanent vinyl that was just in the right color like that red lacquer color the permanent vinyl will kind of act as a protectant on our coaster and then put on our transfer tape i got these coasters in the target dollar spot then we just put our decal on the top of the coaster and that's it. Like seriously, it's that easy. They are so cute. Now back in the fall, I created this little arm to hold this hanging sign. I always knew that I wanted to flip it around and do something else on the back. Because originally I thought I was gonna be painting it out and using it as a stencil. But in the end, I decided to do a reverse stencil. So what we do is we just go ahead and weed everything off that we're not gonna use and leave the words in vinyl, okay? And then we are gonna take our wood round that I've stained in an antiquing wax on the back there's then we apply transfer tape and peel off the backing and put that on our circle where we want it to be located and then rub that into place now I used removable vinyl and then I took some chalk paint in the color plaster and then I very carefully just did a coat of that and once it was fully dry I peeled back our lettering and then I went back in and kind of sanded it all down distressed it a little bit around the edges and that was it I went ahead and hung it back on that little hanging arm thing that I created and to give it a kind of a Christmas flair I put some Christmas greenery and just kind of twist tied that onto the hanging arm and it gives that that Christmas flair Next up, we are going to make a joy tray. We are gonna use this clear tray that I ordered off of Amazon. This time, because of what we're doing, you're gonna to wanna to hit mirror the image, and so it's reversed. And then, of course, we went back in and weeded, put on our transfer tape, and then we're gonna apply our stencil to the back part of the tray, not the front, the back. Then we're gonna tape off all of the extra stuff with painter's tape. Then I took it outside and used my favorite 18 karat gold spray paint. And I did a couple of coats of that and let that fully dry. When it was fully dry, I removed the tape and I removed the stencil and we were left with a joy. Do two coats of white paint over the top of that and let that fully dry. And then to give it a little added protection, I went ahead and did two coats of a polyacrylic 
clear coat as well. And you wanna make sure it's crystal clear. We don't any, want any yellowing to happen. And then when it's fully dry, you are left with the most adorable tray that says joy. Now you could alter the colors how you want. You could do a black backdrop. You could do a green backdrop. You could switch out the coloring of the letters. For this next DIY, the first thing that I did was paint it all out white and I let that dry. Now, that took a while to cut all of the, all four verses and joy to the world. <laughs> I went to town weeding this thing and boy was that kind of a tedious task. It took a while, I would say. Now it was time to put some transfer tape on. It didn't really want to stick, so when I was peeling it off, it literally took me probably like 30 to 45 minutes to painstakingly peel that off. So I finally get it peeled off and I get it applied to my sign. And then I decided to paint it in the celery green that a lot of my other Christmas decor is painted in. That way it all coordinates together. When I went to peel it back, it did not want to pull up in one fell swoop and I had to like little by little, piece by piece, peel off this stencil that was painted down. And then to kind of just smooth it all out, I took a like a little abrasive um, pad, not sandpaper, but just kind of went over the top of that to kind of smooth everything out and it did look a little bit better. I did go ahead and put some antiquing wax on the frame and then we flipped it all over and I used a staple gun to kind of staple it down into place and there came the joy. And then I knew like all of that hard work, all of that tedious doing was totally worth it because I love the sign. It's beautiful and when I look at it, I do feel joy. <laughs> okay, so for my next couple of projects, they kind of have like a spring Easter theme. <laughs> they are super cute and I hope you like them too. I had this thrifted art piece that was in my stash. So I disassembled it. I opened it up with a razor blade, kind of opened it up, took out the glass and set that aside, and then went ahead and painted everything, the frame and even the art out white. So then I decided to use a seafoam craft paint and I did two coats of just a random brush on and I let this all fully dry. Then we cut out our bunny design, which is a standard one that I found on Cricut Design Studio. And then of course, weeded it and used some transfer tape to transfer it onto our art mat. I peeled it off. It looks really cute. I really love how this turned out. I love the little pop of blue. The blue is in my other spaces in my main floor. So I thought this would be a nice touch. And I really think this is cute. Our next Cricut project, we're gonna turn them into carrots. We're gonna find center, mark it, and then we're gonna go from corner to that point and make a mark, and then we're gonna cut them down on my miter saw. Now that we have our carrots cut out, I just went ahead and took a hand sander and kind of sanded everything down so there was no rough corners and smoothed it out a little bit. And I used like a coral colored craft paint, did two or three coats to make sure I had really good coverage. Let that fully dry. I created the stencil, weeded it all out, used the transfer tape, put it down, and then I painted the orange color, which is something that I always like to do the, that's underneath. So when it bleeds, which it always does, it bleeds that orange color and creates a nice crisp line. Then I did two coats of white chalk paint over the stencil, let that fully dry, peeled them back and voila, very cute. In order to attach them, I took out my drill with a pretty large bit and drilled a hole in about center as a little stem for the carrots. I found these, these greeneries at the dollar 25 tree. I used one bush for the two carrots and then I just took some hot glue and shoved these uh, kind of fern greeneries into the carrot. And I think they're super adorable, super great for spring and Easter and I love it. 
I love how it turned out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and saw all of the immense possibility in a Cricut machine. They are so awesome and Cricut really wants you to try them out and they've provided you a 10% off coupon code for all the details on that when it expires and all of that. It will be in the description box below this video. Check it out, see what your savings could be. And I know that you will have so much fun because I have, I've had a blast using my Cricut machines. I love them. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, here's 25 more projects you can make with a Cricut machine. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners. I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.